All right, guys. As you all know, today is Saturday, December 4th, and today I have the pleasure and honor of introducing our MSI who's going to lead us in our wine ambassador training, Ms. Shar Hess. And Shar, you've been showing us all these different little ways to wrap our wine bottles and your little secret ingredient last month as you were cooking on the wine and dines. What are you sharing with us today? Well, today I'm starting from the beginning. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little more detail. I'm going to tell you about my background. And it is, uh, I have a presentation for um, wine grape varieties. So I'm going to give you some statistics and I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so grape varieties for winemaking. Can you all see it okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna minus this. Okay, grape varieties for winemaking. Um, uh, here's the content. I'm gonna give you a little introduction, my background and knowledge of how I found out about everything that I know. Um, we'll go, we'll dig a little deeper into some of the details, uh, data classification, clarifications. Um, this is all about California grape acreage, um, California grape crush report, uh, leading grape varieties and districts. And then the conclusion at the end is very important and why I'm giving you all this information to begin with. So I'm, I'm um, going to be training this whole month. And so I'm starting out from the very beginning and I'm just gonna work my way up to um, different marketing and uh, different aspects of this, but here we go. <laughs> uh, introduction. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. So before I talk about different grape varieties for winemaking, I would like to explain why I feel it is so important to know the facts first. Knowing all the facts about the many different regions, producer, owner, operator, or management firms, farming practices, and procedures will help you better understand what you truly have as you take that first sip from the freshly uncorked bottle of wine from Wine Ambassador. It's really important that we all know this. It's gonna help us um, teach everyone um, and, and learn more. So some of these, most of these pictures that I have here, um, I've had the opportunity to take them myself. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to go to the Crush It 2021 out in Napa to visit the Wine Ambassador Vineyard. It was awesome. Um, a lot of these I took with my own uh, phone camera, so um, enjoy. <laughs> so, oh, this one's gone. It's completely empty. That's not good. Okay, there we go. Um, my background and knowledge. I don't know how I can get rid of this. Now I can't see here. Um, first, I want to start from the beginning and explain my background and knowledge. I was born and raised on a small farm in Northwest Pennsylvania. So agriculture was simply a way of living for me and my family. We not only had pets, but we had animals we were fed and nurtured for the sole purpose of putting meat on the table. That was the tough part <laughs> for me to understand, knowing that the pig I caught at the Grease Pig Contest at the local fair was going to be pork chops on my plate soon. Well, that was hard for me to swallow. Pun intended, literally. As the fourth oldest of five children, we all had daily chores to tend to. And one of those chores was to weed the garden during the growing season. That's right, we didn't use pesticides to control the growth of weeds. We did it the old fashioned way, hands and knees weed pulling. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but growing up on a farm and living in an agricultural community has given me the best work ethic throughout my entire life. Um, so it's not hard to uh, see why I eventually found my way to work for the United States Department of Agriculture Farm Service Agency. I learned more about agriculture than I ever thought I would ever know growing up on a farm. There's so much information that the average person doesn't even know exists. I can honestly tell you from working for the government, there are many great services and departments that provide assistance and knowledge for the local farmers and producers. There are also the not so great things that the government has that, uh, that notorious reputation for but not the department that I was involved with. As a program technician for the USDA, one of my responsibilities was computer and data management, as I had attained a computer programming degree in college. 
but one of the programs that I had been assigned to was the NAP or Non-Insurable Crop Assistance Program. If you know the government, you know they all speak in acronyms. Uh, this is where the government provides specific subsidies to farmers and producers to crops that are not insurable by regular insurance companies. That's right, you didn't know crops were insurable. Me either, until I started working for the USDA. It was this position as a NAP program specialist that gave me the knowledge and friendships that I made in the vineyard and grape industry. I guess I learned more than, than I realized and was nominated by the Pennsylvania State NAP Specialist to attend a national NAP convention in Houston, Texas, to be able to take this knowledge back to the state level and train each county program technician assigned to the NAP program in my state of Pennsylvania. Um, boy, I cannot see the top here. <clears throat> Is there a way I can get rid of this top drop down. If you have a split screen, you can just drag it over. No, I don't. But I, think there's a, I think there's a minimize button too. You can also drag it to the bottom. Oh, I can. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, thanks. That helps. Um, because I came, because I became, um, um, because I came to know most of the farmers and producers in the county, I was later recruited to open and manage an insurance company that specialized in crop insurance only. Well, I accepted the challenge and I learned so much more about vineyards and the grape industry. After managing the insurance office uh, for agriculture risk management in Pennsylvania for five years, they decided to consolidate that office to their main office and farm in Fort Myers, Florida. This is now where I make my home. <laughs> where I live in Florida uh, currently. So giving you the background on myself will tell you that I speak the truth and know firsthand of all the hard work and dedication that goes into any product that farmers provide to consumers. Most consumers don't think twice about this and just go to the store and buy what they need. I, on the other hand, know exactly what goes into providing each and every one of us that precious products um, of the hardworking farmers. So I'm pretty passionate about that. Um, and I try to relay that uh, when I try to bring someone into Wine Ambassador. Uh, the data that I'm about to show you came from my research that has been provided by the USDA and has accurate statistics for your knowledge. The following information I have provided is shown from the leading state and counties of California, which is where the best grape growing regions are located in the United States. Um, I just put a cute little quote in here, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Uh, so now we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the grape varieties of for winemaking. California produces approximately 90% of the wine in the United States and ranks number one in the country. Also California accounts for about 40, 4,391 total wineries. That's a lot of wineries. Napa Valley and Sonoma still reign supreme at the top wine regions in the U.S. both produce world-class wines that are highly popular throughout the world. Sonoma and Napa Valley are still the templates that every wine region is trying to follow. Napa Valley is known for its world-class Chardonnay, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon, while Sonoma is known for its Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Chardonnay. So I, I'm going to tell you a few statistics. Um, this is mostly it goes by the year previous because we don't know 2021 as of yet, they're still coming up with their data. So this is mostly on 2020. California's 2020 grape acreage totaled 895,000 acres with approximately 8,900 grape growers. Of the total grape acreage, 844,000 were bearing while 51,000 were non-bearing. Now I'll go on to tell you what non-bearing means. That means, well, I'll explain that later. <laughs> Uh, the wine type grape acreage is estimated at 620,000 and uh, of the total acres, 580,000 were bearing and 40,000 were non bearing. Table type grapes um, are those that you go just to eat, you know, as a snack, um, raisins, et cetera. Um, acreage of raisin type grapes totaled 145,000 acres um, and uh, 3,000 were non bearing. 142,000 were bearing. The, leader, the leading wine type varieties continue to be Chardonnay and Cabernet Sauvignon. 
flame seedless uh, or the table and Thompson are the, are the best for um, snacks and they call it table, table grapes or raisins. So bearing and non-bearing acreage, all varieties are considered non-bearing for three years. So think about that. When they start, uh, when they plant new vines, it takes three years before they can even uh, be counted as um, to be able to sell them. It takes three years for them to pr produce um, bearable grapes. Uh, so as an example, acres planted in 2017 would not be bearing until 2020. Um, they're also not insurable. You cannot insure them for three years. The only exceptions are the table grapes. Uh, grafting. Um, the two ways, there's actually, there's probably three ways that you can grow grapes. Uh, graftings um, are recorded um, in the previous year. Chardonnay grafted in 2020 onto a 1998 variety is recorded as planted in 2019. This assumes that grafted vines are actually, actually bear full crop in two years as opposed to three. Varieties, data is provided for each variety with 50 or more total acres standing in 2020. Acreage for all other varieties combined in other categories. Um, that's just for statistics down here. So rootstock, most of the rootstock shown was planted in the, pa planted in the past three years. However, some earlier plantings are included. Um, for instance, if a 2018 rootstock planted was budded over in 2020, the year of planting assigned to the selective variety would be 2019. So again, this is 2020 grapes I'm reviewing. And uh, because they had a lot of fires that year, I believe they had uh, some disasters and a little bit of uh, difference in the acreage. So then I, I go on to tell you a little bit about the grape acreage reported. Um, it shows the different raisin, table, wine, bearing and non-bearing, all grapes combined. That's a lot of acreage in that state. <laughs> um, I love uh, statistics and knowing what I'm talking about. So hopefully this can help you um, gain a little knowledge. Uh, this also goes on to tell you about um, the different varieties of grapes, um, the total grape acreage imported in 2020 for these different varieties. Um, and then uh, acreage by type. Then uh, wine type for all grapes, acreage by county. So then again, it shows you by county. Now the two top counties, guess what? They're in Napa and Sonoma. <laughs> Um, and so it makes sense that um, Wine Ambassador is in a highly sought after county, both counties. Uh, all wine, uh, white wine type grapes, acreage by variety. Uh, it's just interesting to me to, to look and, and see the different um, amounts here. White wine grapes, all grapes, acreage by county. And then I also split it up acreage by variety. Red wine, same acreage by county. Um, and this, this shows you a little bit about price. And um, that's, it's pretty shocking to look at it. So the leading grape varieties uh, in 2020, Chardonnay continued to account for the largest percentage of the total tonnage crush. Now crush means, um, well, when you make wine, you need to crush it and um, make and produce um, juice. So that's why you find that you go into a state like Texas or Florida and you wonder how in the world can they have a winery there? Well, they bought their juice from somewhere. So that's how they got their winery. So, um, or in some cases they have their own vineyard and ship it to themselves in different states. But table grape variety crushed for wine account for less than 3% of the total crush, which is very small. Um, District 13, it just shows you there, it, it, it shows you in different, I have a map here later that shows you the different districts, the crush districts. So as you see, there's a lot, a lot, a lot that goes into just producing wine and just um, providing for us and what we love. This shows you the map and de definitions of California great pricing districts. Uh, it's interesting. And the green is Snap and Sonoma. That is the most popular and the most um, expensive uh, wine that um, 
they get the money for. Uh, again, it's not hard to see why um, the wine from Napa and Sonoma are a little bit more money because they get the money for it. This is a uh, crush district top uh, dollar per ton. And as you can see, uh, the, the, down at the bottom, it's only $160 per ton, whereas up at the top, the red is $795 per ton. So there's a huge difference there in the type of grapes. Uh, the leading grape varieties crushed in California, it shows uh, the different, um, um, there's other, looks like Chardonnay, here's the largest, Cabernet Sauvignon, and then it goes from there, but it shows you the percentage of, of the uh, grapes that are most popular in California. So grapes are the highest value fruit crop in the United States. Grape production is valued at over six and a half billion dollars. 36% of the value of non-citrus fruit grown in the U.S. are from grapes. And the U.S. has nearly one million acres of grape bearing land. Uh, that's combined all grapes. Over 7,500,000 tons of grapes were produced in the U.S. in 2018. Uh, and then I go on to show you a little bit more statistics and um, information that is very valuable. Uh, the exports, U.S. wine exports reached 1.46 billion in value in 2018 and 95% of the U.S. exported wine comes from California. Um, it's, it's amazing. The five markets uh, are in European Union, Canada, Hong Kong, Japan, and China. So we export 95% of that. And it's, it's just amazing to me. So in summary, in conclusion, I have shown you the facts documented by the United States Department of Agriculture. There are many, many aspects and processes to providing you, the consumer, with the exceptional wines we have here at Wine Ambassador. From the very beginning of planting or grafting a vine, then waiting three years until the vines are able to be counted as bearing, to pruning, tying, replacing dead vines with dippers, grafting, and most of the time, it's time. Time and care and dedication that farmers and producers take to craft, these extraordinary quality wines for us to consume and enjoy is beyond appreciated by wine lovers like you and me. <laughs> and that is a picture of uh, the entrance to Wine Ambassador. Um, I love this picture. I've used it many times in my marketing. And I wanna thank you for allowing me to share a bit of my knowledge that I've gained over the years to better provide answers to those who question in price or quality or value of what we have here. I hope you can take away some of the knowledge and share with your new wine ambassadors to carry on the tradition from this generation to the next. So <laughs> I'm gonna stop sharing if I can figure that out again. Very top. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry it was a little short. I, I kind of went faster than and I expected I didn't time it very well, but that's what I have for you. And um, I hope it was uh, helpful. Hugely. Um, the fact that you took the time, the time for you to present it to us is a very small amount of the research time that it took for you to put this together. Yeah, it took me about a month because I knew I was going to be training last month. So I, I wanted to prepare for this. And I really wanted everyone to know about it because it's something we just don't think about. It and adds it, to the value the of the background. Of yeah, it does. It helps because I know where to get the information. But yeah, I learned a lot there. I learned a lot. That's so uh, I don't know awesome. if we have any, I don't know if we have any questions or if I've kind of slammed everybody here, but... <laughs> Uh, looks like Karen has a question. Go ahead, Karen. Um, you will be sharing that presentation with us, please? Yes, I was going to give it to you ahead of time, but then again, I forgot. But yes, I'll get it out to the MSIs and they'll share it like we did the other day. Because that's awesome. I'm a numbers person, so that those really talk to me. Good. That's great. Thank you. And that's very, very useful. I mean, it, it I is. never I mean, really understood myself the the value and the why, but that makes it much clearer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
All right, and then uh, Renee, you have Hi, to Renee. unmute. There you go. Yeah. Hi. Um, can I just ask you on your presentation, which um, program are you using? Are you working with Microsoft or the iMac? I don't know what you're on. I I use um um. I just went blank. I actually, I downloaded as a document that can be downloaded off of the drive for everyone. But I use, yes. I use PowerPoint. It's a Microsoft. You do use PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Okay, thank yes. you very much. But and then, it then I also save it as a PDF. You can save it as a PDF too. It was excellent. Great. Thank you. All right. And uh, I don't see any other questions. It looks like we're going to be able to, you know, sometimes we don't need the entire hour, guys, to fill ourselves with such amazing knowledge. Yeah, there's a lot to handle there. <laughs> Lots there of is. Up. There is. And I, I'm looking forward to getting that presentation. Um, I can put it in here. And I, know I struggled with that the other day. So I think I'm just going to download it to the MSIs. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, Kathy. Kathy, has, yep. Kathy has a question. Well, really, I just want to say thank you. Um, I didn't know that much about wine. And I'm so glad you did this because it makes me appreciate it even more. Um, I, I didn't know about the graph. I know they graph, but you don't know how long they have to wait. I know in planting plants, sometimes my friends, when I give them plants, throw them out after a year. But some don't bloom for two to three years. So I can understand that with the grapes. And uh, just seeing the breakdown in table grapes, raisin, uh, you don't think about all that. You take so much for granted. So we really do. I thank you. I, I really think don't think we give farmers enough credit because. No, and I know. grew up in the country in farming, but I go visit, you know, people with <laughs> own farms, but uh, you don't realize all the work involved, you know, yeah. you just don't. So no, thank no. you. Thank you. You're welcome. My Thanks. mother's side of the family, Char, is from northwest pennsylvania oh they, they are all farmers and my, it was my grandfather who decided to call the quits and leave the farm too out of all the 14 brothers um but even though we moved to western new york everybody had a big garden in their backyard you know like me too wherever i go i, I moved to california for a while i moved to north Carolina. wherever i go i have to dig up a little plot of ground <laughs> to plant something and I really yep. didn't appreciate weeding my garden until it was actually in my blood. I couldn't, I couldn't live without it. My yep. mother's side of the family, they're all from Altoona. Yeah, I, I relate to Char. Growing up on a farm, you didn't appreciate it. Nope. When you were, when you were growing up having to dig around and go on your hands and knees pulling up. Yeah, when I had chores, I kind of hid. Everywhere you get, everywhere I go. Climb, I'd be up a tree. I'd climb a tree and hide. So... <laughs> That was my kid's favorite chore, pulling weeds. Oh, favorite? No. <laughs> no, they hated it. Guys, That's why they're bad at it, did it? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That presentation was amazing. And that's the kind of stuff I used as a non drinker to help write my pages. So, mm -hmm. those of you that um, don't participate in the drinking aspect of it or don't do it enough to actually feel like you're comfortable writing your pages or marketing, the wine program, there's all the information you need right there to answer basically any question that somebody comes up to you outside of taste. If they want to worry about how it tastes, then that's where you can say, come a customer and try it. Put it in their court. But you got it all the a information. Knowledge. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a ton of knowledge right there. And trust me, you can spin it any way you want and it still is facts. You can't dispute facts. No, no, you can't. Renee, did you have another question? One second. I think my favorite part of what you did, Char, is you took facts and turned them into a story. Yeah, I, it was relation. It was a relationship to me, so it was related, and and probably why I'm so passionate about it. You know what? I haven't heard people really focus on with the wine pages, Rory. I can't remember exactly where he said this, but because of the prohibition we went through in this country. We lost a couple of generations of the knowledge and understanding and the importance and the deliciousness of wine, um, even though the other countries didn't. 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds 
sitting at the table having lunch, drinking a glass of wine because it, it's food. And we lost that education and that knowledge and that, that, that luxury here. But it's coming back. And that's why we're in the middle of the trend we're in right now. Yeah, because a lot of people isn't, didn't realize the bene- the health benefits of wine. I mean, uh, that's the same thing. You can thing do a whole training on that. Exactly. I mean, it like you said, it was a food. It was just part of your life growing up. You know, I know we did moonshine. I'm sorry. So when we got <laughs> sick, it was nothing unusual for grandma to come to us with that mason jar saying, here, get rid of that cold. So, um yeah, it was just one of those things that you grew up with. But like you said, we lost it when prohibition came in. And now it's like a dirty word all of a sudden again. And it's not. It's really like Char just proved it's healthy for you. Um, and like now said, in a poor. <laughs> proper, a proper poor, which I think is poor. two to three ounces, right? Yeah. Two to three not ounces. Not That's why, That's why I asked Peter the other night. <laughs> I guess I'm not proper. (laughs) That's why I asked Peter the other night, is is this a proper pour? And I think my glass was that full. But you do have those instances when a proper pour is. Just get a bigger glass. But I grew up the same way, Sheila. And even till this day, I'd rather get a glass of gin on the rocks, put a blanket on, sit on the couch, watch TV, sip the gin, fall asleep, wake up, sip it again, just keep doing that and the cold's gone. (laughs) Than, than that's, the remedy. that's the remedy my great-grandmother that's how she kept the that's how she kept the uh, farm going after my great-grandfather was killed in a farming accident is she did moonshine uh out in the back 40 literally and had it all in the basement that could only be accessed through the porch so the kids were always safe that door we need to door, get a, uh, we need to get a metal detector and head to her property, Stacy, because there's probably some mason jars full of money buried all over that backyard. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> we actually had a family reunion, and that's exactly what we did out there. <laughs> get your metal detector. <laughs> we, we had about 10 of them. So, All right. So let's get some of these questions going. And then I do want to cover one little thing regarding customer service for our customers in Wine Ambassador. So we're going to take these three questions and then I'm going to change the gear a little bit to providing customer service to our customers. Go ahead, Renee. Okay, thanks. I just want to say one thing in general. Every time I get off a meeting, I go back and I change pages. Because you learn every single time you come on one of these meetings, you guys are going to drive me nuts. I'm never going to get on. Okay. The second thing, um, I knew Look that how Grant, great uh, your pages are because yeah, of yeah, just 2087. <laughs> but um, Rory had met something or maybe nailed it about Alabama, and I'm moving to Alabama. Oh, so is there a problem with? Sending will, wine into, I know they're not a dry state, but they have, it's Baptist yes. country and. Nope. We, okay. How it works for Alabama. And that's part of what, let me, uh, let me address that. Okay. After we get the other questions done. So it kind of, we can kind of keep no it problem. categorized here. Okay. Stacy, um, I would just say that there's special shipping uh, availability for the state of Alabama. Get with yeah. Stacy or well, I mean, get it, with it, your. No, I want to cover you it. Because Stacey it, on it. Everybody get with Stacy on it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I want to cover it because Tanya's been getting hit with a lot of tickets yeah. and stuff. So okay. I'm, I'm trying to cut down on the ticket load here. But um, all right. Uh, they should always go to their MSI instructor before they fill out a ticket. Always, 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 well, always. Yep. I want to get it. I'll get into that. Ted, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Char because I learned a hell of a lot about wine today awesome you know, trying to sell it but you know you know so much more to say about it now that i you know drink it tastes good but they have a little backup too, very so that's very wonderful. very well done and i thank you for the presentation i'm glad so i stayed welcome. on oh you're so welcome there's so much. There's so much information there that's been stolen from society because of 
prohibition and resveratrol is was the number one antioxidant on the planet until they found out how much res uh, about blueberries right but still resveratrol is a close second to being the number one antioxidant on the planet mm -hmm. good stuff all right ted did you have a question then or is that all you needed to say uh, so i'm done okay so Sheila, we need to make, learn how to make some of that um, blueberry <laughs> moonshine or blueberry. <laughs> well, I blueberry got my wine. recipe. I'm sure we can add something in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gardner, North help us! <laughs> in the state of North Carolina, you can make up to five gallons of moonshine legally. Oh, for personal use. Yep. All right, yeah, Del, what do you got? Oh, okay. Well, I tell you what, Sean, that was an excellent presentation. I learned a lot. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you. But one thing that I really got from it, it, it is, is the facts back up the talking points. You know, we hear about 80 to $120 bottle of wine, uh, 300 to $600 bottle of wine. Sometimes you just can't process that right away. But then when you talked about the, the Napa and Sonoma Valley being where the best wines are, it just, it just qualifies it. It yep, just verifies sense. it. And it uh, just gives you more of that confidence about what you're talking about when you're talking about the wine to someone. So excellent presentation. Thank you, Del. Mm -hmm. I wrote that while you were talking, Shara. I didn't want to interrupt you in any way, shape, or form. I was afraid to even hit that and it might pop up during your presentation and distract you. <laughs> but during what, when I remember, I can't, it was closer toward the end. I wrote, we get the best wines from the best region made by award-winning winemakers with normally the highest cost in mm -hmm. the industry mm -hmm. at club prices. Wow. Yeah, it's not hard to sell once you know the facts. Because Rory and Tanya and Peter and Brett and everybody's seen the uh, opportunity, the trend. And those winemakers, they needed somebody to make that commitment to them, right? Somebody, mm -hmm. they, they, they were in the right place at the right time, noticed the trend and... and seize that opportunity for us. So now we're, we're gonna kill it globally. We're in the right place at the right time. That we are. Now, we're all about you know, expanding our businesses by gaining new customers, gaining new reps underneath us, but we need to remember the customer service end of it. When your customer needs help, whether it's changing their order from a mixed to an all white or an all red or whatever, or um, changing their debit card, or they've got a shipment issue, you need to be the first person they come to, need to be. Because you have information accessible to you that those of us on the Wine Ambassador support line, which by the way is, is about 60 of us here, we don't have global access to your customer's information. We don't have access to your customers or even your credit card information. That's for your safety. That's for their safety. So that's why we have the back office. And if you guys don't understand the back office, Kathleen did a great training a few months ago. It's out on YouTube. Learn it. Have your instructor, you know, instructors sit down with your students and do a back office training. Let them get comfortable with it. The nice thing with the back office is you can't, you can't screw anything up, you guys, unless it's your own stuff. Now, you have a debit card issue for one reason or another, whether it expired or got compromised or whatever, you need to get into your back office or your customer needs to get into their back office to fix it to put it in correctly or just re-put it in you need to log in no one else can do it for you the customer has to be do it themselves filing a ticket tanya can't do it okay it's got to be that person it's their credit card we have high security measures in place for this reason and when they go in they need to go into their smart ship and you need to cancel the smart ship. 
and then go back in and set up the smart ship with the correct credit card information. Now that does not mean when they hit save and all that, they're not going to see an immediate charge like that. Okay. It generates overnight. Am I remembering that correctly guys from the other night with Tanya that it's, it's overnight. It's the next business day. So if you're doing it on a Friday, Saturday, or a Sunday, it's not going to happen until Monday. You guys need to be aware of what day of the week you're doing this stuff. Don't file a ticket for that. You go, if you can't get it or you can't remember it, go back to the person who enrolled you. And if you are the person that enrolled this person and you don't know the information, you've got your enroller to help you. We always have a line of escalation. At the last resort, should they be calling the support line? Because everything is controlled in your own back office. If you have a wine shipment damaged in shipment, it gets recorded. UPS reports it back. Yes, in that case, you will want to file your own ticket from your back office. Just to touch base with Tanya that, hey, you got this notification. What do you need to do? Take responsibility. What do you need to do? Your customer called, UPS told them their box got damaged. Work with them, help them fill out a ticket. Now, I'm sure some of you are going, I don't know how to do the ticket. I want you all today to log in to your back office. And on the left corner where it's got your profile information, it's got your name, whether you're an estate or grain crew or whatever, underneath there, there's this little outline. It's a little oval. It says customer support. When you click it, it's gonna open up a new screen and up in the blue in the upper right corner, it's gonna say create a new ticket. Click that, fill that information in. Please, please, please do me a favor, guys. When you're doing any ticket, put your name, your email. You know, if it's for Wine Ambassador, your Wine Ambassador ID. The more information, the more details you put on that ticket is only going to help you and prevent you further frustration. Now, on that note also, do not go to the Facebook official page and put your gripe out there in a post. It will not get looked at. It will get deleted. Flat out, it's not the place for it. We have these other systems in place. Right, Niall? Yes. And Two things I'd like to add to that when you're done. You know, sure, go ahead. You're done? Go for it. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned UPS notifying that the box was damaged. Mm -hmm. I spent three or four times over the last couple of years that people got a notification from UPS that the box was damaged. And uh, two times that I can remember, the per I had the person go to UPS and physically inspect, and there was no damage. The box got wet some other way, and they assumed that a bottle broke inside and that shipment was damaged. So if you ever get a notification that your box was damaged and they want to send it back and not deliver it, go to UPS and say, I need a picture of that, please, to make a claim and inspect the, the box because it could have got wet from an outside source. That is really good to know. Which is good to know. And then the last thing is, remember this, when you fill out a ticket, you're not talking to some random employee that's getting paid 9 or $10 an hour. You're talking directly to Tanya Rickard. Yep, I was going to talk, say that you need to be respectful as though it was your own instructor. Tanya deserves that respect. She is here to help you. But if you raise your voice or you get snotty, my kids, if you were, if you're my student and you get snotty, you're going to be treated like one of my children and you will be talked, you know, talked to it. We can't have it guys. We have to have respect here. We really do. Well, Tanya's going to take care of the ticket anyway. She's going to just do it. She'll and do she, what she and can. She, and she won't even say anything. But does yeah. she deserve that? That's my point. Just remember who you're talking to when you fill out that ticket. Yep. And now, if your customer or your rep wants to quit, 
do not tell them to call into customer service. We can't do it for them. We can't do a ticket. There is, again, your back office full of information. Go explore it. There's documents there. There's a document, a PDF that your customer or your rep has to print out. It's under documents. When you Here's what I say. I, I don't know how to quit. I, I, I've never quit anything before, so I, I can't support a quitter. Call Stacy Southward. She'll fill you in on that. And I'm going to send them right back to Niall. <laughs> oh, she's she's going to say, you're, you want to quit? What's wrong with you? <laughs> and then maybe they won't. <laughs> well, but in the case, they have to for whatever reason. They maybe just hit the lottery. Whatever. They're going to miss out on all that great wine. But just know a ticket is not going to make it happen. They're going to continue to get charged. They can go in. They need to cancel their smart ship. And if they fully want to resign their position as a member in the club, not just not get the wine, but resign their position as a member in the club, they have to go into their back office, click on the hamburger, the three lines, those, that's a hamburger, and it opens up. Look for the word that says documents, click on it. Opens up a whole bunch of different documents. Go look at them. There's one there for resigning. And okay. as long as they do that before their next $50 yes. annual enrollment fee is charged, there will be no more charges. Correct. And but they have to do it at least a week before the next shipment. Don't, yes. don't come to us the day before the shipment or the day of and then call in and complain because you got charged, that your debit card got over, you know, your checking account got overdrawn. Timing, responsibility. And with that being said, just be kind about everything. Be kind and be helpful and help them get it done because everybody's life changes every six months and they'll pro they're probably going to come back. But they're, if, if we're not nice about it, you know, we're lessening the chances of them coming back, right? But our support team, guys, when they get a call in, filing tickets is not the way to do it. They need to know how to log into their back office. I've actually walked people through to find their original sign-up email, and all the login information is right there. They can even hit forgot password and reset it to get in, but they have to be the one doing it. Joel, you had a question? Uh, yeah, just, just a um, statement about creating the, the one ambassador ticket. When they click on customer support, they have to, it's actually a link at the very top that says submit a re request, right? Oh, submit a, yeah, yeah. I, I think I said create a new yeah. ticket, but yeah, submit a request. Yeah. Yep. I just, just mentioned that because I know sometimes people go in there like, well, I don't know where it is. How do I do it? Right. So it's just in the top right corner. Yep. Exactly. Yep, that's all I want to say. Thanks. Okay. Linda, Niall, Shar, Sheila, did I forget anything? Sounds good to me. Looks like everything is covered. covered. Okay. I just, you know, if we can cut down on the support tickets, we're going to keep be able to concentrate on the fun that we're having here and put into place all the knowledge that Shar just handed us. <laughs> I'm so excited to get that presentation and distribute it to my team. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if Rory can, maybe I can, you know what? I wonder if you I can put it in the Dropbox. We have one more small thing. I got a question in Skype. Yeah. So someone says, I hear you guys say all the time, stories tell, facts smell, right? And then today we got all these these great facts. And they, they're talking about writing a page. They're, they're, we're getting mixed up with understanding and knowing the facts to help you speak and relay information and relay trend, right? What Shara showed you is not how to make a page. What Shara showed you was a lot of knowledge and information for you to interpret and help make your page with confidence. You still know the facts, that's good for you. But when you're writing a page or creating an article, an advertisement, it's your, that's when you tell the story with the facts that you have backing you up. That makes sense? Yeah, don't make this a research paper, guys. No. <laughs>
I did that go for look you. At Char's, <laughs> go look at Shar's page. I'll, I'll guarantee Shar's page doesn't look like a um, a slideshow. No. No. It, that would never be approved. <laughs> so that's so that's the that's the difference. That's the balance. Uh, hopefully, that answered the question. Now, if anybody's here from the Chamber of Commerce for Sonoma and Napa Valley, um, Char can be reached at. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, no. Well, here I have a phone number. I'll put it in chat. <laughs> I, but what I think I'll try and do because I know some of these people, their MSI is actually Rory, and maybe I'll just try and put this into the Dropbox. There you go. Since I think I still have access to that. So, so remember, when you're filling out a ticket, you're talking to Rory's wife. Yes. And our compliance officer. She knows her stuff, you guys. She knows her, her, I mean, she's great. Yes, Tony, I see your hand is raised. We'll get to you. I'm not going to forget you. I might just hit end, but no, I won't. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I didn't hear you say anything about documents. Um, I get calls on Wine Ambassador because I am on Goya. And... Um, Kathleen taught me a lot when she was in charge of all that, and she said that uh, what I should do if somebody wants to quit or, you know, change things is that I would go to, I would show them where they went and where they needed to go to get the document that they needed to fill it out. Yeah, that's what yeah. I just went over. Yeah, but I didn't hear you say actually send the document to them because I get no, an awful lot. I don't lot send up. No, I don't send. They, no. they have access to their back office, Tony. I know. You but walk there them, are no, a listen, lot of people listen, that are absolutely even, not no. able to do that. I'm sure they have somebody in their family, somebody that they work with, somebody in their community, somewhere around them that can help them print that document and get it sent in. But the key factor, the key thing Stacy talked about was teach them how to shut their smart ship off. They're not going to get charged anymore. They've bought some time. And make sure that they get that document printed somehow until it becomes a DocuSign that I know that they're working on um, in the future sometime. Teach them how to find that document and print it. And if you can't print it, you can save it as a... Uh, an attachment, put it in the email and send it to a family member that can print it for you. There's a lot of different ways to find to print that. And if they are in business and they're and they're doing all this and they're working on PBS and they're working in WordPress and they're doing all the other things we do, I'm sure they can be they can find a way to get that document printed. So no, I'm not going to print it for them and send it to them. Um, that's just putting too much uh, more of a workload on Goya, uh, the customer support line teach them how to print it, teach them how to save it and send it to somebody that can print it, teach them that, but don't print it and mail it yourself, no. All I did was I went, all I did was I went to the three lines, hit documents, and there's the, the, the form right there, guys. That's how easy it is. They, all they have to do is open it and hit print. If they don't have a printer, like Niall said, they will be able to find someone that can print it for them. And very yeah, soon- print, The printing options have saved also, right? It's one, of, one of the options to print it is to save it, right? All computers, you can download it and save it as a PDF, right. yes. I don't think you can type on top of it. It's not a, it's not a type of PDF. You actually don't have to print it. If you have Adobe, you can sign with your signature right at the top plop in that, and then save it as an attachment and then send it. That would be your that's, signature. That's what I was about to say, Char, but I was afraid to because someone's going to ask me how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here comes another but, video. <laughs> I want to I bring up something, too, that I learned from Peter. Um, the cards that are not going through, if you go through the processes, like you said, shut the smart chip off, take the information out of there, put it back in, and it's denied again, it will not ever be accepted. 
because it's going through the algorithms there with the banking institution and it won't happen. I have somebody like that because he tried it. He said, I don't understand. My card works in Velveeta. It worked here before. And now there's an issue with it. It's an address thing. He changed the address. He changed his address on his card when he moved, but it flogged the card. So that card was not able to be used. He just got a new card and he'll go through and everything will be fine. But Peter said, once it goes through and, and is denied more than twice, it's in the system that way. So it can't be brought back up. Thank you, Linda. I, th I think I remember Peter trying to tell me that, but I mean, and there is, there's a lot to remember and none of us are experts. That's why we have resources. That's we, why we go up two levels. We can go to our enroller. We can go to their enroller. And we just keep going up. We keep reaching out. Okay. All the way, all the way up to Stacy. All the way up to Tanya. <laughs> there is one other thing, too. So I, ha I had this um, happen to me earlier this, I don't know, last week or something. Kept saying that she was charged twice for her grapevine. Well, actually she wasn't. What happened was when she got her first grapevine, the 59.95 or whatever, she had money in her wallet. So when it came through again, there was like $14 difference. So she thought she got charged for the 14.95 and the 59.95, she didn't. So because you got to watch, if you've got your wallet set up and you have that checked, it's going to drag it out of your wallet first. So, and that's actually the easier way to do it. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. But she couldn't remember if she even had a wallet set up. But that's Ain't what that I'm right, saying. Space. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, but that's, that's something else to think about. No, you didn't get a discount because you're a grand crew on your grapevine. No, it doesn't like that. Grapevine is something totally different, but that that was a, a valuable thing. And I too already went ahead and set a support ticket. And if, hadn't, but. if you're going, if you haven't signed up for Grapevine yet, don't think you can click on it to look into it. Go, you need to ask someone for the differences um, because as soon as you click it, it's an immediate charge. If you click on the one grapevine, the standard one, the fourteen ninety five, and then you go click on the fifty nine ninety five, you're going to get charged for both, and there's no refund. Don't even try, because we're we're you, we got to make sure our everybody that we are signing up understands when they're doing grapevine and when they sign up for grapevine, it is not refundable and it is an immediate charge. I had a long discussion with Peter and Brett <laughs> and no, it's not changing. I've asked. <laughs> I've also seen one that was supposed to process on the 25th of the month, but it couldn't process. Um, and it took a couple of weeks till it could process. So then they did like say October and November within a few days of each other. Yeah. So that would look like a double charge too. But if they just go through the records to see how many actual 14s or 59s they have, that would clear that up. And, you know, you guys hear Stacy say all the time, go back to your instructor, go back to your instructor, go back to your instructor, go two up, go two up. It's, Stacy's not saying that just because Stacy wants to say that. That is actually our um, policy, our protocol. Yes, it's our protocol to do it that way. So as an instructor, it's our responsibility to, here comes a Rory word, mind your business and teach the people that you bring in, please come to me first. Um, not saying you can't go talk to Linda or Stacy or Cher. Please come to me first with those questions and give me the opportunity to, to help you learn and get that taken care of before we go fill out a ticket or get a hold of somebody else when I could have done that for you and taught you while I was doing it for you. Taking yeah. care of it. All right. We're right. going to wrap it up with these last three questions. Um, Tony and Renee, I'm not, I, you know, you guys have already had questions. So if they're not a question and it's just a comment, let's lower the hand. Um, yeah. Darlene, you raised your hand. You haven't had a chance. Go ahead. Okay, Stacy, I want to make sure I understand. Sure. Um, this is for people that we have brought in that have joined as with a PBS or uh, anybody. 
Okay. Anybody Even, that you have has joined, this is a wine ambassador call. So that aspect, the other, the PBS is out of it, but anyone that you bring into wine ambassador, whether it's your student, your cousin, your friend, a stranger on the street, you're the enroller. Right. But as far as if they want to leave wine ambassador, is that, does this also apply to if they're just a customer? Yes. Okay. I wanted yep. to, all right. I wanted to make sure I understood. Thank you. You're welcome. No, that not was a great a question. Lot, not a whole lot of difference between uh, the customer and the ambassador, other than one shows a package of wine to set themselves up in business and they get paid. Where a customer just is just a customer getting wine shipped to their house every day. Each is a position in the lineage, right? It has to be, it has to have the paperwork done. It's got to be officially canceled by that person. It can't be done by me, can't be done by Stacy, can't be done by Tanya, can't be done by anybody else legally. It has to be them that fills out that paper. Okay. Um, so. Now, one thing they, they can do with that paperwork is they can actually print it as a PDF and attach it to a ticket. Okay. That would work because not everybody okay. has a fax machine. Right. And, True. but that's, yeah. So that's one way you can do a ticket is as long as that form is filled out. But if that form isn't filled out, how does Tanya know she has no legal backing that that person actually, it could have been a, a disgruntled spouse. Right. So that's right. why we need to, you know, we got to protect everybody. Okay. And another question, um, do the customers also, the auto shipment, is that automatically in place or do they have to activate it or deactivate it, whatever? That is typically automatically activated. Okay. They have to go in and opt out. Okay. Cancel their smart ship. Right. It's, like, it's a smart ship. They're getting a monthly order, just like an ambassador. Like I said, there's not much difference between the position itself. It's how you came in and what your intentions are, whether you're getting paid or not. Now, um, if they're wanting to just cancel the shipment because they're going on vacation, but they're still going to want it a couple weeks later, do not cancel the smart ship. Go in and do hold shipment. <laughs> there's a <right>. difference. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Especially and, if they're an ambassador, because remember, if you miss your smart ship for a calendar month, the volume that's in either side in that leg is going to flush, it just go away if you're not inactive each month. That's, that's coming really, 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 really soon. So just shutting it off and, you know, for a month or two and then maybe turning it back on later. If you have significant, any volume underneath you, uh, you don't want to lose that. It'll flush. Yep. Okay. This is an industry, industry standard. Um, actually, it's not just us. It's everywhere. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Great, great questions, Darlene. Those are, those yeah. are perfect. Um, <laughs> okay. Final item, Renee. Final one. It's either for Stacy or Niall or Sheila. Oh, sure. Where do I go or whom do I go to <laughs> for some guidance on I'm going to open a separate account. I know that for business, it's just going to be under my name. Um, I don't have to file correct for a LLC until I make a certain amount of money. I believe I heard Rory say, um, how do I, who do I go to question? I have a few questions on that. Um, I'm and gonna deductibles. You're gonna need to go to your accountant and your lawyer. Okay, okay. Uh, personal yep. one. Gotcha. Yep. Bas basic yep. questions you can go to up, but legal questions you should always talk to your accountant or an attorney or somebody. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We're all good at giving opinions and advice, but it we won't stand up in court. None I thought of us we are had. Um, did, I thought we had a lawyer. We could. We don't. Um, we don't. Pay? That's he's Rory's lawyer. Ah, okay. He's I not for us to for get the legal company. guidance. Okay, not for us forget to get personal legal advice. No, I thought yeah, he no, was no. a company <laughs> lawyer. Okay. Thank if you. he had extra time on the saying, you might be able to de uh, de retain him and pay him. But 
Yeah, we don't. Jim oversees all <laughs> contracts and documents and stuff That's for the company, not for us. Yep. Okay, thank but you. I wouldn't all even right. reach out because I'm going to pretty much guess that he doesn't have the time anyway. All sure. right, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>